Hi, this was Jose Luis and welcome to a new hands-on exercise on this series, Introduction to Parametric Modeling. In this exercise, we're going to imagine that we are designing some kind of park that needs uh, an arrangement of benches, for example, the benches being some kind of simple box, all right. But what we're going to play is with the arrangement of those boxes, because we're going to play with generating one dimensional grids of objects, and then giving them incremental rotations between them, so that we can start playing between with the angles that they form with each other. And then we can start exploring different arrangements of rotations and layouts of these objects between between them. This can lead to interesting explorations of how these objects um, are laid in one dimension. And actually, we will be extending this exercise to two dimensions, so that you can start seeing how this, how we can control how many elements we have in one direction, how many elements we have in the other direction, their, their gap, but also most interestingly, how by playing with their, with their variational angles between them, all these super interesting patterns start arising that give me a space to explore different arrangements or different ways of laying out of this, all these elements, which is, as you have heard me a thousand times say, is one of the powers of parametric modeling. By designing the algorithm that generates a particular form, you design the space of all possibilities that that algorithm can give you formally. Now, this exercise is going to be good for practicing again grids, creating grids in one and two dimensions, but it's also going to be really good for practicing data manipulation inside of Grasshopper. We're going to see examples of where to graph some data and where to flatten that data. Okay, so without further ado, let's get hands on It's going to be very cool. So let's get started. What I would like to do is I would like to create this series of elongated boxes. Let's, let's think that we are designing, for example, a park, and these are going to be benches. And I want to design these benches in a way that have like a slight rotation between them, because maybe this helps like uh, bring people together, or it looks more interesting. I don't know, uh, whatever that is, right. So we want to explore the design here. So what I would like to do is I would like to create a rule where all these boxes are situated at a regular interval. All right. But at the same time, they have some kind of angle or orientation between them. So what I can do is, um, as a process, what I can do is I can start thinking that these boxes can be generated from planes. And then <clears throat> these planes, <clears throat> excuse me, and then these planes are going to be the planes that I'm going to use to generate these boxes. So the process that I will follow is that I will create all these planes, I will create a sequence of these planes, and then each one of them, I will rotate it incrementally, and a certain amount of a certain amount between them. And for that, maybe the parameters that I want to choose for my definition are going to be the amount of benches are also going to be the distance between these benches in the x direction, for example, how much they're far apart. And then maybe things that I want to control is what is the starting rotation? So the first one starts at zero, what is the end rotation? So for example, the last one ends at 160, or it ends at 360, it does a full turn. Or I may want to control instead of that, I may want to control the angle between them. I think because I want to, this is going to be very linear, I think I will want to go for start and end. And also because we haven't seen ranges that much as an example, I will also like to practice that. So I think with that, the whole problem is going to be generating a sequence of planes, rotating those planes incrementally, and then creating boxes on top of those planes that maintain that orientation. So I think that's going to be quite simple to do, but it's also going to be super fun. We may actually do this and then extend it into 2D and see how that works. Let's, uh, let's get hands on. Let's get started. So I took some, I took the freedom to start on my own. So I created a point here in Rhino and that I brought into Grasshopper so that I could have the location of the first of the first bench in my in my array. And then I also created parameters for all of those things that we define in the sketch, the number of benches, the 
the distance in the x direction between them, and then the starting angle and the end angle. So all of these are sliders now here. So if you're following this video, following with your grasshopper, you may feel welcome to pause the video uh, and create this on your own, and then follow me as I keep going. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create the first plane of the series that I'm going to, so this, I'm going to create the first plane on the series, which is going to be a plane that is going to be oriented in the X and Y location, in the X and Y direction. So for example, this is going to be a plane that is going to go here. And I think the plane is a little small. I may want to crank up the visualization. So for example, a size of one. All right, so now that we have that, what I would like to do is, what I would like to do next is to take that original plane and to copy it as many times as I need to. So what is that going to look like? Well, I'm going to uh, do what we typically do, which is going to be, I'm going to create a series, and then the series is going to start at zero. The uh, amount of the step size is going to be the distance in the x direction between them. And then the amount of objects is the amount of values is going to be how many benches do I have? And then that is going to be the panel. This is going to be the relative distances. And then as we have seen in previous examples, now I'm going to move this plane and then I'm going to use vectors in the X direction. Uh, so I could construct, I could construct, sorry, not construct point, but I could construct vectors. Oh, it's not showing up here. So vectors, I could construct vectors, but and and just use the x coordinate. Or another technique that you can use is because you know, we know that these vectors are only in the x direction. What I can do is I can I can put here a series of unit x vectors that I can factor or that I can extend or multiply by these distances. So for example, if I do that, you can see that I'm going to get the I'm going to get those values and I'm going to get this series of vectors which were unit, but I multiplied them by 0, 10, 20, therefore scaling them up or down. This I can do because I'm just walking, I'm just using one direction. If I was using two or three directions, then I would probably be better off with the creation of a vector from components. And then once I have this, then I can just create my array of vectors in the x direction. And I have all these vectors here now. Maybe I can squeeze them in a little bit. All right, so now I have all my planes, but all of the planes are, all of the planes are following the same orientation, X and Y. So what I would like to do now is I would like to each one of them, rotate them incrementally so that the first one has no rotation, the second one has 40, 80, 180, all the way, uh, so that my first, uh, my first bench, has the starting angle and my last bench has the value of the last angle. So how do I do that? Well, first of all, I have a series of planes, each one of them with their X, with their origin and with their normal. And what I would like to do is I would like to rotate is each one of those planes uh, around its center, a particular angle. So where can I do that? I can go, for example, to transform to Euclidean, and I can rotate an object on a plane. So how do I do that? So I can, what are the inputs here? So G is going to be the base geometry. That is the plane that I want to rotate. I can plug this in here. Angle, I will figure that out in a second. And P is going to be the rotation plane. Right now is the X and Y global plane, so you see how all the planes are rotated 90 degrees here. But because I want to rotate each one of the planes around itself, then I can use the very same plane, the own plane, as the rotation plane that I want to rotate around. So if I do this, I can rotate each one of the planes by 0 0.5 pi or 90 degrees. So, and, if I, and if I hide this one, you can see that all of my planes are now rotated 90 degrees because originally X was pointing this way and now X is pointing this way. But of course, I don't want all of them to have the same rotation. 
What I want is each one of them to have a different rotation depending on where they are on the list. So what am I going to do then? What I would like to, what I will need to do is I will need to create a series of numbers which represent each one of the angles. Now in this case, instead of using series, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a range because I'm going to use a range because the way I have defined my problem, I want to control the start angle, the end angle, and how many elements there are. Therefore, series is not perhaps the most indicated. Range is much better because range gives me control over the, the limits and how many elements are in between. So I'm going to place here a range component and I'm going to start filling in the information. The range needs a domain. So the domain, as we said before, is an interval that has two numbers, the start and the end. So I found domains under maths and under the domain component, the category. So that's going to be the range. And now the number of steps is going to be how many steps I'm subdividing this range, this interval that goes from 0 to 360 on. So I might be tempted to just plug in this value here. But as we will see, or as we saw already in, in previous videos, what this gives me is actually 11 values because what this component takes is the number of steps that I want to subdivide the range in. So imagine if I have a range and I divide it in two steps, then I'm getting three points, I'm getting three values. So, and that's not what is, that's not going to match what we have in our series. Our series, we had 10 values and with the range, we're getting 11 values. So how can we solve that? Well, turns out that well, the only thing that we need to do is we need to divide in a number of steps that is one unit less than the number of values that we want. Because we want 10 values, we need to divide into nine steps. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to subtract this and I'm going to shortcut the creation of a panel by adding two forward slashes and typing here minus one. And then, sorry, not minus one, I'm going to double click here and type one because I want to subtract one unit to this. So this is going to be number nine. And now as I do this, you can see that my numbers are zero to 360. There is 10 of these values and that matches the amount of benches that I have. So I think we are ready now to convert this into radians. So we'll convert this into radians and then plug this into the rotations here. And you can see that now we are going, this one is rotating 40 degrees, more and more and more, and it's kind of nice, these rotations. And let's play a little bit with this. So what? You can see no rotation, like slight rotation. Oh, this is going to look so much better as soon as we place some boxes on top of this. So these are going to be this was the creation of the first round of XY planes. This is the creation of the second round of XY planes, not XY plane, the planes with the rotation, the incremental rotation. And now the only thing we need to do is we need to uh, create some, the benches, the boxes on top of this. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go to primitives in surface and I'm going to find for some boxes and I'm going to, for this one, I'm going to use, uh, am I going to use center box? I'm not going to use center box because center box, uh, well, I, I'm going to use this other one, the main box that gives me a bit more fine control of the dimensions and the offset of those dimensions. So I'm going to place here the main box. You're going to see that the main box asks me for a base plane which I already have. So those are these ones here. And it already has some pre, uh, so pre populated values. So x minus 2 to 2 minus 0, 5, 5, and 0 is 0 to uh, whatever. So obviously, I want to do this very parametrically. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop here some sliders. So for example, uh, this goes from 0 to 10, I think. And so this is going to be the, the, the X dimension of the bench, the Y and the C 
direction of dimensions of the benches, okay? But if you remember, if I plug this right away, remember that the inputs, so this is going to be x, it's going to be y, and this is going to be z. Remember that the inputs of the domain box is a domain. And the domain is an interval between two numbers, which means that because I'm plugging in just the number right away without creating an interval, a domain, then it's taking it as a domain that goes from zero to that number. And that's why the benches here are kind of offset, are at the corner of the plane, which could be something that you might be interested by design, but just to try to be faithful to the original design and also to explain to practice domains as well, let's make sure that we centered these boxes correctly so that they are the width and the length are centered on top of the plane, but the benches are sitting on top of the planes as if they were sitting on the ground of this uh, virtual park. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take x and I'm going to create a domain between minus half of this value and positive half of this value. I'm going to do that by creating an expression and then the expression is going to be take a d as a dimension, for example, and then what I'm going to do is this is going to be minus 0 0.5 times d. That's going to be one expression. And the other one is going to be positive, it's going to be positive 0 0.5 d. And then I'm going to play, plug those in here. I'm going to create, construct a domain from these two values here. Okay. And then I'm going to plug this into x. You can see that now x just got centered right away. So I'm going to basically copy and paste this block for y. So y and y. And this I'm going to place in here. And then for c, c I'm not going to do that. I'm going to plug in the value right away because I want, I want the bench to sit perfectly on top of the ground level. So these are the advantages of controlling things numerically because you have control of the offsets and you have control of, um, I like, it's a little more tedious, but I like working like this better. So this is going to be the creation of the benches, okay, which I'm going to place here. And now, now that we have finished, now we can play a little bit with the definition. So now I can play with how many elements we have. And you can see that for 25 elements, the composition starts to be really nice. The benches are probably a little too tall and maybe they're a little too long here. They're overlapping, but I can see some kind of pattern, some very nice pattern arising here, which I kind of like. This could be a really, really interesting uh, sort of arrangement. It's so interesting that I wonder if we could actually play with this, but instead of having it be in one dimension, so linear distribution of these benches, we can do it in two dimensions. So we could do a 2D grid of these benches. Are you, are you, do you wanna, do you wanna, do, <laughs> do you wanna try doing that? Let's give that a try. So I have gone ahead and copy pasted like the beginning of our code where we generated the strip of initial x, y planes. And then I have generated two more sliders, which are the amount of planes in the y direction and the distance between them. So what we need to do now is we need to create a series. I'm going to copy paste here and I'm going to say that this is the amount and this is the how many the, the, the step between them and this I'm going to connect here a panel because I have OCD and I like seeing things very clearly. And then I'm going to use this to generate unit y vectors that are going to define how many times we're, how and where we're going to copy this strip in the y direction. So that's going to be this, and then we can see that these vectors are working great here. And then what I'm going to do is that I'm going to move all these, with these vectors, I'm going to move this strip of uh, planes. But we can see as typically as we did, as we did in the previous video, we see that because this data tree of planes is has a branch called zero zero and this other tree has another branch zero zero these elements get matched one to one and that's why we get this diagonal 
of planes. So what I need to do is I need to graph one of the inputs that goes into this move component, and it's going to be, for example, the top one. As I do that, now I get one, one element per branch, and now this element will be combined with all of this, and this element will be combined with all these vectors, and therefore it will create this 2D grid of elements. All right. Wonderful. So we have the 2D grid of x, y planes. But now we need to rotate each one of them incrementally. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to say, well, probably the order is going to be this one, and then this row, and this, this row, and this row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste the code that we used to modify to create the numerical range. I'm going to make sure that this is the start angle and this is the end angle. And now the only problem is that before we just plugged in here directly the amount of objects that we have in the x direction. But this is not going to work now because now we have a hundred planes. And this way we only generate 10, we only generate 10, um, we only generate, we only generate 10 values. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that somehow we generate, uh, we generate 100 divisions of this interval here. So what I can do is I'm going to create expression here. And this is going to be, for example, the number of elements in the x direction, the number of elements in the x direction and the number of elements in the y direction. So I'm going to plug this in here, and I'm going to play, plug this one in here. And I'm going to say that the amount of elements that I want to that I want of divisions is going to be n number of x times number of y elements. And if I use that as the amount of steps that I'm going to divide the range between the angles here, what you will see is that uh, I'm actually creating 101 values. You can see that on the highlight panel, 101 locally defined values, whereas the amount of planes is actually 100. So we have the same problem as before. It's the total amount minus one. Good thing we're using an expression component because I can just very easily modify this and say this is this computation the amount of elements in both directions minus one unit. And then now I have all these ranges, all these angles that go from zero to 360. And then I'm going to plug this in here and, and this, and I'm going to create another rotate. What was that? I used rotate over its own plane. All right. So I have these elements here and I have this list here. So I'm going to say, that I'm going to rotate these planes around a, I'm going to rotate these planes around a plane that is the plane themselves, as we did before, with all these angles here. And I'm going to hide this and hide this and hide this. I'm going to disable the pre-visualization of everything so that I can see clearly here. And what I'm seeing is something that it's not entirely what I wanted. Is that correct? So I'm seeing these are kind of rotating a little bit, rotating a little bit, rotating, but then it looks like here something is happening. And it turns out that here I have a lot of rotated planes on top of each other. And if I were to now copy and paste all of this, so the part where I generated the parametric box, the parametric box on top of here, you would see that it would be a mess of benches that are kind of inclined, but here there's like um, like a thousand benches that are on top of each other. So obviously this is not correct. Now let me disconnect this here. So what could be the problem? What have we learned in this series already? Whenever we have something that seems like a problem, did the, who's the culprit? Who's very likely the culprit? The culprit is going to be some kind of data problem. So let's take a look at the data. So what is coming into this component? We have the angles and the angles are a simple list that has one branch called 000. And then it has a hundred elements on this branch. However, 
what is coming into the geometry and the plane are these planes, which is a data structure that has seemingly different branches. And I'm going to say it has 10 branches. And inside of each branch, it has 10 elements, which correspond to each one of the elements here in each one of these rows. So it looks like what's happening is that because we have different branches and we have one single list, what's happening is that these 10 planes are being matched with these 100 elements. So we have 10 elements plus 90 on top of here. And then we have another 10 that are matched with 100. So we have 10 elements and then 90 of them here. And then altogether, this is not working because this list has a thousand elements together, whereas this one has a hundred. And what's coming from here is this data tree. So what can we do? Well, what we need to do is we need to manipulate the two data trees so that their structure matches the way we want. And the way we want is that we actually want, we actually have 100 different angles, rotational angles, and we want to apply each one of these to just one single plane from this list, from this data tree. Now, we could do that by theoretically, what we could do is we could take this list, and then we could take, we could do some data tree manipulation and divide the whole 100 elements in 10 different branches, and each one of those branches manipulate the names so that the names match what we have here. But as we explained in different videos in the series in the past, creating the complexity and the richness of this data structure is actually quite tedious and it takes a lot of time and a lot of like components and it's, it's fairly involved. So in this particular case, for the sake of creating this, it's actually much easier to just destroy, to kill the complexity that we have in this list and flatten that list to a single list that contains all the elements one after the other in a very similar fashion as we have it here. And if we do that and we plug that into the two inputs, whoa, what just happened there? Whoa, that's kind of cool. Ah, and look at this like star-like formation. Wow, that's nice. And, but if we, if we ruin the fun, then <laughs> we will get all these planes that are rotated incrementally from one from each other. And we have that the resulting output is the 100 elements. Okay, and then I think we're now ready to plug them like this. And to start, if we look from the top, we can now start playing with, <clears throat> uh, for example, the start angle, if they're all almost the same, so you can see how we can incrementally. This could be nice for like a plaza where, I don't know, there's some kind of focus of attention here. Or if we want to go crazy with this, we can just, uh, let me crank this value up to like, I don't know, 10,000, for example. Um, for example, 10,000. And now we just, and as we start scrolling, we start seeing that some patterns start arising that are kind of cool. So this could be like a trajectory, like a path, like a walking path, or it can seem like almost seemingly random kind of, but there are some small patterns emerging. And uh, we can also play with like the distance between them, of course, and like how next to each other they are. And um, I don't know, this looks really cool to me. I like, I like this one too, but I kind of like order without order this kind of situation that there's like some slight pattern, but it's also, I don't know, I think this is super, super nice. So this could be, this is now super ready to <clears throat> be a, an algorithmic, a parametric modeling, a parametric modeling, parametric modeling definition that helps me find a nice correlation between the dimensions of the benches, how they are laid out in in two dimensional space, how many of them I have in each one direction, and then play with the end starting and the end rotation to find interesting, oh, this one is really cool, to find interesting patterns um, <clears throat> that may arise by with, 
that may arise by playing with the parameters. This, as you might, as you have heard me say like a thousand times in this series, this is one of the powers of parametric modeling. Now that I have implemented all the relationships and the numerical relationships, I can play with the parameters and start seeing what the definition, what the algorithm is giving me as a result, which is a super, super nice experience, like finding designs within the algorithm that we have implemented. Okay. Right. So with this, I'm going to leave it here. That was longer than I anticipated, but I thought, I hope that was fun. I thought it was a lot of fun and we could now bake this, you know, and um, we can now send this to the competition, you know, and this, um, I think I could win some kind of competition with this. I think maybe. <laughs> All right. So this was a parametric grid of 2D objects that have incremental rotations between them. And hope this was fun. Hope you learned some uh, on the process. And um, let's keep on working on more hands-on exercises in this series. If you, if you enjoyed what you saw, maybe consider liking this video, subscribing to the channel, turning on notifications to see when we go live, when we publish new videos. And in the meantime, hopefully see you on the next video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.